Today I'm here to talk about fursuit making do's and don'ts. First off, I want to start off by saying thank you guys so much for being here to watch my videos. If it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. Without further ado, let's move on. Our first do concerning any part of the fursuit body, including the head, the paws, the tail, anything, you want to always make sure you use a pattern. Patterns can be very helpful to get the symmetry of the face correct or to make sure that you are making your pieces the exact same as the other. This is important because typically you don't want a piece to be too much different from the piece that you already have made. However, on the don't side of this, don't not use patterns. If you do not use patterns, it is very hard to replicate the same thing you've made already. Take my paws for an example. I used a pattern to make these and it was a pre-designed pattern I had already made. With that pattern, I was able to make two paws identical to each other. If I had not had the pattern, I wouldn't have been able to make these paws look exactly the same to each other. Our next thing is a don't. Don't use cardboard for the head of a fursuit. Never use cardboard for the head of the fursuit. Please listen closely. Never use cardboard for this head. If you use cardboard, your sweat can be absorbed in the cardboard and thus making the cardboard mold. So please don't ever use cardboard for the head of your fursuit or any part of your fursuit. I don't want you guys to have any sort of breathing problems due to the mold that it can create. On the upside of that, do use upholstery foam. Upholstery foam is squishy. See? The squishy nature of it is because it has air pockets in it that help release air from the suit, making it a little less hot than something solid like a resin base would be. I've personally never worn a resin base, but I can imagine because it's a solid base, it wouldn't be very comfortable for the long run. It would also probably be very hard to breathe in as solid material can't pass air through it as well. That being said, please keep in mind to always use upholstery foam. If you want to make a resin head, that's perfectly fine. Just take into account that you may have some breathing problems and it may be a little bit harder to walk around and do things as puny fursuiters who have heads made by upholstery foam would do. Do, make sure ventilation is good. If your ventilation isn't good enough, you won't be able to breathe as well in your suit, thus creating a very hard space for you to breathe in. If you cannot breathe through your mouth very well or get air from your eyes at least, you need to make sure that you can find some way to make sure you get air, whether it be a fan in the nose or bigger eyes, or if you have to make the mouth a little more open. Any way you can, you need to make sure your ventilation is good, otherwise you won't be able to breathe as well. On the flip side of that, don't make the eyes too small or the mouth too small. As you've probably seen of kimono suits, the mouths are very small because it's a stylistic choice. With things like that, you have to take into account that you need some way to get air to pass through the suit. Kimono suits have a round piece of plastic usually covering the eye, so they are also not able to get ventilation through their eyes at all. Typically, kimono fursuiters have to carry around a fursuit fan and have to take breaks quicker than a tuny fursuiter with a larger mouth or bigger eyes would have to take. Keep this in mind when choosing your fursuit type or making your fursuit because if you choose a fursuit type that has too small of a mouth or you choose as a stylistic design to make the mouth too small or the eyes not have enough ventilation, you may not be able to breathe as well either. Please keep that in mind. Ventilation is always very important. We're back again with another do. Do make sure you shave down the facial fur of your suit. If you don't shave the facial fur, it's not that bad of a thing. It'll just make your suit look very poofy and admittedly it's not as cute as you'd expect. Um, when making the fursuit face, you want to make sure that your fur is either shaved down before you sew the pieces together or afterwards. 
it doesn't really matter. However, you need to make sure that it is shaved down flush with the fur around it. I'd recommend and suggest actually to shave the fur down after you've sewn the pieces together. This will help make it all look as even as possible because they will all be the same piece and you'll be shaving them at the same time. This is a very helpful tip because I see a lot of new makers who most likely cannot afford to buy a dog shaver or just don't really think about that if they shave the face of their suit it might make it look a bit better. And I can understand the not affording it part which is perfectly fine. My first fur suit I made was actually hand sheared with a pair of dog shears. I uh, couldn't really afford the shavers at the time, but after selling that first fur suit, I was able to go and buy the dog shaver in which to make Queen Bee's head hair. And so I shaved her fur down after I got every piece sewn together, and that started me gluing it down on the base. Uh, advice if you don't have the dog shaver, you could hand shear it down as I did, or you could just wait a bit longer, maybe make the head pieces, get it all together, but don't glue it down yet. If you glue it down before the shaving process, it may be a little harder to shave areas that are in a crevice, and you may end up nicking the fur too much down to the very base of it. Please make sure that you try your best to shave pieces that you think you may not be able to shave before gluing it down. Otherwise, the base will look very inconsistent in the shaving process. With Queen Bee here, when I was finishing her up, I shaved from her nose up before I put it on and then glued it down. Because otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to shave in these little crevices over here at the side of her nose. So please, please, please keep that in mind when shaving. Always remember where certain things are on the base that you think you may not be able to shave around. This will help you in the later process of making your suit. Do wear sweat wicking materials under your first suit. Things that are sweat wicking materials can be like Under Armour heat gear. They take the sweat while you're sweating and it absorbs it, keeping you cool while in first suit. This can help a lot with temperature control and to help regulate the sweat inside the suit so that your foam doesn't absorb it. Another thing with that is always please try to line the inside of your head. If you cannot line the inside of your head, wear a balaclava over your head so whenever you put the fursuit head on, the balaclava will wick away the sweat inside and it won't make your fursuit smell gross and stinky. Along with that tip when full suiting, don't wear just your underwear on here these. I know it might sound comfortable in theory, but please, please, please don't do that. Don't at all. It'll be hot and itchy, I promise you. Always, always, always wear some sort of sweat wicking material. Under Armour gear is the best. It's a bit of... Another don't would be don't use other glues besides hot glue. Hot glue is perfectly fine to use when gluing the fur down to the head of your suit or in other situations. However, do not use any other glue as the fumes from those glues can cause respiratory problems and cause you to need to go to the hospital. So please, please, please don't do that as well. On the flip side of that, hot glue should never be used as an alternative to sewing. It's okay as a beginner to practice by gluing the pieces down if you're not very good at sewing yet. However, do not do hot glue as a replacement for sewing if you're making fursuit commissions. You need to learn how to sew before you can start ever doing commissions. I know this should be an obvious tip, but please, please, please learn to sew first. It would be a very bad idea to start making suits if you can't even sew yet. So please make sure to practice. Again, it's okay for beginner fursuiters when you're just trying to learn. The last don't I really have is dealing with your eyes. Don't use mesh that you can see your own eyes through. What I mean by this is you should always use a type of mesh like buckram that isn't really hard to see through, but the person on the outside cannot see your eyes through it. This helps to create the more toony illusion and make it look a lot cuter. 
However, if you use mesh where your eyes are visible through the mesh because the holes in the mesh are too big, it can look a little creepy and unsettling. So please, please, please try to do some research. Find the mesh that best suits you. Queen Bee's eyes here are made of buckram, so it's a little easy for me to see out of it if I have a light environment. However, in the dark, it's a bit harder for me to see. Well, that was my video on do's and don'ts of fursuit making. If you want me to make another part to this, please comment down below. I'll read your comments. I love to see what you guys say, and I can't wait until the next video. But please hit that subscribe button. Ding that little bell if you want notifications on when I upload. And for that, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.